Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is uh, lecture number seven for process modeling and simulation, chain chemical engineering three to four by Dr. Bassam Al Hamad. Today, we are going to take the modeling of a search tank. Modeling of the search tank. And to start, like we have stopped here from last lecture, uh, we are going to open a new lecture today. And this lecture is going to be modeling of a surge tank and many people would ask well what is what is exactly a surge tank and what 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 you are trying to do within a surge tank oh my god that's awful <laughs> okay the surge tank would be something like oval like that and something like that and so on so what do we want exactly from the surge tanks uh, sometimes you have a, 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 a high pressure and because of that high, high pressure within the system and taking it to another column, whatever this column to be, and, or, and it also could be coming from another column, uh, whatever that column would be. So you want just to put off some pressure. You want to put off pressure. So it's, it's, it's a part of kind of a relief thing uh, and, and it's mainly for safety okay it, it is required for safety so what do we have we have uh, we, we want to model this part here where it exits a certain column and is going to enter another column so that part here so that part here where it enters and then it leaves we have like two search tanks <clears throat> and I would call this like vessel one v1 and I have another vessel vessel two and what 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 is the 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 important factor or the important process variable that I'm trying to control? As, as you can remember that you all say that we want to control a certain process variable. And I think what comes into your mind is that the main most important thing that we want to control in this process is the pressure. And uh, we you could talk about temperature here. Uh, however, the drop of temperature is not of really of our concern uh, because we could have a heat exchanger before we enter to the other system. So the, the, the temperature is not the issue here more than it is the pressure. So we want to control mainly the pressure. So it's not the temperature. We want to control the pressure. So if this is P1 and uh, P1 because it's in vessel 1 and then this is P2 in vessel 2. So I'm going to have P1 and P2. So what I do want to find, I want to find how does the pressure change with time the first tank and I want to find out how does the pressure changes within the second tank. Now in most cases, uh, so uh, that for the two vessels here, uh, we, we usually don't have reactions. But if we do have reactions, we, we can talk about that. But usually we don't have any reactions within the system. Uh, however, there is something that we, we are going to cover. So we are going to consider now what's entering here is just one component. But of course, it's not always that you have one component and you, have can, you can have two components within the system. So we are going to take like two examples. Example number one where we have one component and then another example where we have two components. And it's important to know that what happens for a two components because the vapor pressure uh, or let me say that the, the total pressure will be the pressure of the two components P A and P B. So, so things are things are going to be a little different. Uh, that is not as important. It could be important to, to know how much vapor do we have of each one, but we are more concerned about the P total. Uh, because it is the pressure that we're trying to control. So uh, if, if you think of it, if we don't really control pressure, if we don't have a control in this pressures, this just could blow away because this is a closed vessel. It's like having a balloon and you're just having a balloon filling in, uh, filling in a balloon. It's just getting bigger and bigger and then bigger and then brah, it blasts. So we don't want the, the, the case of, of, of blowing up our vessels. They are not as cheap as a balloon. Okay, so let's start our process. How to get the pressure. 
We didn't talk about the pressure, how to get it. Is it from the overall mass balance of the component balance equations? And actually, uh, it can be both. And that's what I did mention it earlier. We can get the this pressure, with, it can be obtained from the mass balance equations, the overall mass balance or the, or the component mass balance, and it also can be appearing from the energy balance equations. As this is not the temperature is not of our concern we are not going to consider energy balance we are going to be fixing ourselves with a mass balance equation okay great so how we are going to start our system here so we are going to do the balance on vessel one and then the balance on vessel two okay so let's do the balance the mass balance of course we're going to do the mass balance on vessel one okay so the mass balance on vessel one, because we are dealing with, with gases, it's easier to deal with gases with number of moles. Why? Because if you can remember that, you can remember the ideal gas law in which we, we, we uh, that's called ideal gas, gas law. So if you're dealing with gases and all what you're dealing with in the system are all gases. And if you want to find the number of moles, it's called to PV over RT. So if you do a molar balance, which is moles, Okay, if you do molar balance, you're going to find what? You're going to find P. So from N, you can find P. That's the idea. So what we have here, we have DN1, which is for vessel 1 by DT, is equal to N in. How much is getting in? Minus N1. So let's look at the system here. So what do I have? I have, uh, let me put that in blue. So that I have in here. And I'm having N1. This is dot and dot. Again, just for the convention thing. So the N dots, the N dots that we have, I think so this is different. Just put the, 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 the red one. Okay. So just for a, a convention thing, we don't want to use N1 dot. Rather, we want to use Q1. And we get rid of the dot. So we don't like dots. Okay. So and I dot will be like QI. So in this case, for our problem, we are going to have DN1 by DT is equal to QI dot minus Q1. And that is like, oh sorry, QI dot QI minus Q1. So that is just like nature. Okay, so as we said for N, N is equal to PV over RT. So if you just put it as N1, so that N1 will be P1, v1 over rt1 beautiful so all that is in the differential equation so that all that will be in a differential equation p1 v1 over rt1 divided by rt1 and all that is by dt is equal to qi minus q if you look at it what are the constant values v1 is definite constant because the volume of a closed tank is a closed tank right it's a closed tank so this closed tank that I have is closed. So the volume is always fixed. It will never change. Why? Because the gas fills up the whole container. It's not like a liquid which could take part of it. No, it's a gas. So it's looking up at the gas, V1 is constant. R is the, 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 the universe constant is constant. And T1, we are just assuming that T1 is also constant. So in this case that we are assuming or is given in the problem in the exam that assume T1 is constant. Okay, so we are going to be left with, of course, let me take the rest outside, V1 over R, T1. I will remove the R1, it's just R. It's a universal constant. Okay, that's R. Uh, and to DP1 by DT is equal to QI minus Q. Uh, I think so. We already got dp1 by dt by its own. So the things are beautiful here. So it will be dp1 by dt is equal to r t1 over v1 multiplied by qi minus q. And that is the beautiful equation that we have here for our system uh, for dp1 by dt. And similarly, if you're going to calculate, if we are going to be calculating db2 by dt for the second tank it will be rt2 
over V2 Q1 minus Q2. The one exiting from the system. If you just go to the top here, so what do I have? I have QI here, I have Q1, and I have Q2. So from this, for this on the second vessel, Q1 is entering and Q2 is leaving the system. Well, uh, it looks great. It looks great. So that is the equation that we have. That is the equation that we have for DP1 and DP2 by DT. Well, this looks like if you if you if we just want to run the degree of freedom, and the degree of freedom says that degree of freedom, if you have your VIP thing and we have the state variables and have your normal variables and have inputs and the parameters which are the constants. For the state variables, which are the differential equations, we have P1 and P2. Okay, for the normal variables, we do have QI. Well, we can say QI is an input, but that, that's really, that, that depends on many <coughs> different para, uh, assumptions. It depends on how you're going to target. I'm going to keep it as an input, and then I'm going to mention that why it could not also be an input. The other normal variables that we have, Q1 and Q2. If you can recall that for F1 and F2, when we had a tank, we said that this F leaving the system is a function of the height, is a function of the height. So F here was equal to alpha square root of H, which is a function of the height. If you can just recall, F is equal to CV into delta P over the specific gravity. And then we have taken the specific gravity with P with a rho G, uh, because this is rho G H. And we said that we have uh, the, this whole term becomes alpha, which is CV multiplied by square root of rho g over square root of specific gravity. And the h from the do, uh, rho g h of the delta p, it becomes something like that. Okay, so uh, why? Because it depends on what? It depends on the height. Well, because you had the head pressure on one side, there's no pressure on the other side. It is open to the atmosphere. Okay, beautiful. Or it goes to another system. But here, the, our example was open to the atmosphere. But talking about our system, talking about our system, we have Q1 and Q2. Actually, they have pressure pressing on both sides. So if you go to the top here, if you go to the top here, uh, if you look at Q1, there's pressure pushing in this side, and there's another pressure on the other side. I think so. I need another color for that, just to look at it. So I have pressure here, and I have another pressure here. And if you think of it, if P1 is greater than P2, it will go to this direction. However, if we have P2 is greater, this P2 is greater than P1, then it will go to the opposite direction, that direction. So just to look at it, sorry for that, just to look at, at it again, so what do we have here? Just removing things so that it becomes clearer. Uh, so if P1 is greater than P2, it will be in this direction. And if P2 is greater than P1, then it will go to that direction. I think so this is obvious uh, where the higher pressure is. So Q1 is a function of both P1 and P2. Uh, and Q2 will be the function of P2 and what is entering, to, uh, what, what is the backup pressure that comes from the second column, which I would call P3. So Q2 is a function of P2 and P3. And if you, if you go back to QI, actually QI, we could identify it as an input because we know what is that input flow rate, input molar flow rate. Uh, but if you we, if, if we don't have that value, that input molar flow rate, like we don't we did not identify it so qi will be a function of what will be a function of the pressure pressing from that column here and the other pressure that is coming from this vessel because this pressure p1 is pushing from all sides the gas is pushing here is pushing here is pushing here is pushing there pushing here and pushing here as well so p1 is like pushing on the all of the size of the container so QI with a P function of like a P not here, if I would say, 
and another P P P one. And rather than saying P naught, let me say P I uh, P I. Okay, because we said E I is like the initial thing. So Q I will be a function of P I and P one. Okay. After all what we have said, after all what we have said here. These normal variables Q1 and Q2 are definitely a function of what is uh, what are inputs and QI could be an input if we know the value or it could be a normal variable. Other than that, we have the parameters. The parameters are going to be uh, the, the T1 and T2 and the for volume of vessel 1 and volume of vessel 2 and some more parameters that will come on the way. Uh, as we will see now because when we see the degree of freedom the degree of freedom which is equal to mv minus ne we are going to have like four variables minus two equations dp1 by dt and dp2 by dt so this will be equal to two of course we will not forget why we are having it over uh, sorry under specified we are having it under specified because we did not specify how to solve for Q1 and Q2. So we need to solve for Q1 and Q2. And to solve for Q1 and Q2, we already mentioned that Q1 is equal to, and I'll put alpha 1, which is also another function of the characteristic of the valve and the specific gravity. So I'll not go into the details of that. So that is the characteristic, uh, very similar to the one for the flow, into the difference in the pressures, the difference in pressure. Uh, and the difference in pressure is now it's not head pressure, it is the real pressure of the gas. The, so that will be P1 minus P2. And Q2 is going to be alpha 2 into P2 minus P3. And this P3 that gets from the distillation column from back. So uh, if we just can recall, so we had something like that. And the second one, and that is leading to another tank here. And we have a tank here. So we know PI, or I would say that we know Q, we already know, uh, we already know QI. If you don't know QI, then QI will be an equation like that. QI is equal to alpha I into PI minus P1. But currently, we said that we know QI. So here, we have P1 and P2. So what is the value of the flow rate of Q1? It depends on P1 and P2. So that is the difference in pressure, which is alpha 1 to square root of P1 minus P2. And what about Q2? Q2 depend on P2 and the backup pressure of, 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 of P3. So Q2 will depend on P2 and P3, as we can see here. And if you get these two equations, definitely we have two more equations. And our degree of freedom will be 4 minus 4 equations. And it will be 0, and then it will be exactly specified. So this is what we have uh, for how to control how to control uh, our uh, system. Uh, sorry, uh, how to model our system so that we are able to control pressure one and pressure two within the system. And this is all when we have what when we have only one component. Uh, however, if we have two components, if we have our two components. Uh, we are going to have something additional, but we'll keep that to the next lecture for lecture number eight. So I would say that now we finished lecture number seven. Hooray. Okay, so see you at lecture number eight with happy faces. Thank you very much and hope for you all the best. Thank you.